Hello guys, my name is Arun and welcome to my channel. This series is a series of tutorials on advanced Fortran programming. Now, uh, before I start with this tutorial, uh, this is kind of a, uh, you know, uh, an optional tutorial I actually tried to mint because one of my senior in my department and he's a good friend of mine too. He, uh, he kind of suggested me today say, saying that, hey Arun, uh, since you're working with Fortran and uh, there are a lot of, you know, mathematical packages associated with Fortran, I mean, build with Fortran. Why don't you just give a tutorial on that, so that you know people might uh, be u get used to it in the future? Well, I thought about it and I felt since this is an advanced tutorial series and many of you guys uh, you might find this really useful, you know, I thought of touching upon that to in today's topic. So as a result, I kind of came up with a program today, just some time ago, and I was just looking through some uh, looking through some stuff in the internet just to see uh, how this can be done. Okay, for those of you guys who, who don't know what LAPAC, uh, who don't know what's going on here, today I'll be explaining you guys uh, how to integrate uh, some for, uh, ma famous mathematical packages like BLAS, LAPAC and uh, se several other packages meant for com uh, scientific computation. Okay, now, uh, see, LAPAC, uh, sometimes called as linear algebra package, package is a set of, uh, it's a collection of subroutines and functions developed by you know developed by several people in the past uh, you, uh, for doing some ba basic linear algebra operations. Suppose you want to find uh, the sum, find the solution to a set of simultaneous equations. Uh, if you want to do that, instead of writing your own code, just like what we did last time in the gas elimination example, instead of doing like that, okay, LAPAC has a lot of subroutines inside it which it can be used. And uh, if you want to do uh, you know uh, something called as an LU decomposition or uh, find uh, the uh, eigenvalues of a matrix uh, if you want to find the in a condition number of a matrix or you know norm of a matrix uh, if you want to do some kind of linear algebra based on that and uh, you know kind of based on that and similar to that and all you know, it's you don't have to necessarily sit and write all the code okay because that kind of code writing code t t takes a lot of time and uh, you don't have to do use that. LAPAC has all the LAPAC has all the information you want. Okay, and if you guys just ch search uh, in the internet LAPAC. Okay, and by the way, I'm using a different system here because the screen is wider here, so I can you know parallelly you know, check parallelly. I mean, show you both. If you guys just type LAPAC in the internet, okay, uh, the first thing in the first thing you'll get is uh, this the le uh, link to netlib.org. Okay, click that, and it's, it says linear algebra package. And if you guys notice, it's a very big list over here. What's more interesting, and what's it's of importance is that these are like uh, history on how it developed and how it got modified and all. Yeah, you can read it. You can read this at your own pace. But wh what's important is that it's a free package, completely, fr completely free package, and the, it comes under you know uh, some kind of uh, general public license, so it can be used. The latest version is 3.5. You can get that, or else, if you want to, uh, you know, uh, or else if you want to run this through internet or something, uh, what you can do is just ask uh, install LAPAC in Ubuntu or something like that. You know, uh, if in my place nearby, uh, I'm uh, in my place. Okay, this I got this link. Maybe in your search, it may it may get something similar. What you do is that I just got this web page. Wherein, the, wherein uh, it's an, I think it's an Indian Institute of Science webpage. It's a institution in India. Okay, there there's I think this astroph astrophysics department. I suppose somebody there gave an introduction as to how to install them through terminal in Ubuntu. What you do is they just type all these commands and uh, run type all these commands and click enter. Automatically, this w these will uh, install the required packages to run BLAS and LAPAG. Okay, BLAS is uh, I mean. Blast is some kind of a prerequisite for LAPAC and I, that's what I remember. Okay, so if you want to install LAPAC, Blast has to be installed by default. And uh, the reason why people prefer LAPAC is, th is there's a, uh, I'll, I'll explain you guys. Uh, LAPAC Wikipedia. If you go to LAPAC Wikipedia, okay, LAPAC Wikipedia, uh, if you guys notice, this LAPAC is actually made in Fortran 77 and for C language they use separately. Okay, uh, you know many la many many languages use them. 
some uh, if you can if you want the good details about it it's all over here and uh, you can have a look at it and many computer languages like uh, matlab matlab and numpython of python uh, octave they all are built up on it they all have, have i mean they all are you know built on top of it so let's see love pack wiki if i'm if i'm right if i'm right they might take us somewhere yeah Blas and Lapac actually they are uh, used for the, I mean they are they are actually under run underneath Lapac, Armadillo, Linpack, GNU Octave, Mathematica, MATLAB and NumPy and R. You know these are these packages actually under the hood loose use Lapac and Blas for all their computation purposes. Okay, enough of me you know uh, enough of me rambling about these. Let's run the let's have a look have a quick tutorial on how to run this okay now what i have here i just have a small program over here okay let me type it on the top uh, let me type a comment program to uh, solve a system of linear simultaneous equations system of simult linear simultaneous equations okay now uh, this program sta this program starts here with the name solve one. Okay, I set an I set n equals three. Thereby, uh, I have three uh, two one-dimensional variables of length three, namely x and p, a uh, three by three matrix A, and some integers i, info, LDA, LDB, and NRHS. And then I have a pivoting matrix, an integer pivoting matrix i pivot. Okay, I'll explain to you guys why this is. Okay, and uh, re uh, using this reshape command, I kind of uh, stored one answer over here. Let me show you that. Uh, uh, how do I put it? System of simultaneous linear equations. If you go to a system of simultaneous equations in Wiki, okay, uh, there's this example. There's this example over here. I'm using the same example over here. I'm just copying all the va copying all the right hand side values and uh, reshape here in the co column wise. No. Fortran is column contiguous, so I'm writing the those values here, and then the I mean the left hand side here and the right hand side on this B matrix, and I'm assigning B to X. Okay, now this value N R H S equals one, indicating that the number of right hand sides in B, the number of terms, number of you know columns in B is actually one. It's an indication, and L D L D A means the leading dimension of A. I mean the number of the largest dimension in A. And the LDB stands for the largest dimension B. Since we are having a, an n by n system, that is actually n. Maybe in some, uh, sometimes in a certain parts, certain times you may get a, a non, you may get uh, the equations larger number with. You may get more equations with less variables or something of that sort. No, this these are just quick checks to do it. And uh, here's the main part. Uh, this com this subroutine D G E S B. DGESV is actually for solving the linear system of la simultaneous linear equations in LAPAC. There are sim there are multiple versions of it. Like if you want to go uh, detail, okay, there is this. Uh, if you guys, uh, there's this uh, user's guide. User's guide in this page, HTML version of the user's guide. And if you guys look at it, there will be like uh, so many pages over here. You can just have a look at how to use that and all. Okay. Uh, if you just go up next, 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 they'll give you all the things, things like what to do, what. Okay, wait, 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 hold on. Uh, up. Sorry, let me just check. Uh, previous. Yeah. Okay. There's a naming convention over here. What does it mean? Something. So this com. This is actually. I'll walk you guys through. D stands for the 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 names are of these functions and subroutines are written in a. This format X double Y triple Z format. I'll explain. The first letter X stands for X stands for like this. S means real so, and D means double precision. Since we're using kind equals eight, it's a double precision function which returns double precision values. Next two letters Y Y has the meaning, has a meaning. And if you guys look at look at this pack, uh, list over here, the table over here, G E means for general, so it's either unsymmetric in some case rectangular matrix. So G stands for that, and the last three digits has a specific name, and uh, I think it's given in section 2.4. If you just go to that section, uh, let's see. 
if I were to click that, if I were to click that, if I were to click that, you know, yeah, there will be a lot of things over here. And if you guys check to check this out, uh, I mean, there's a lot of you know page, pages over here with just one link to link to the other and stuff. Okay, what uh, what it is simply says is that uh, this SV is used for solving a system of simultaneous equations. So it's a uh, this subroutine is uh, double precision general rectangular condition general rectangular matrix solving uh, uh, subroutine for solving the uh, equations so and this n stands for the order of the matrix nrh stands for the number of right hand sides a stands for the matrix coefficient matrix a lda stands for the leading dimension of a the ip is actually a matrix for some pivoting it requires it does it don't need not be assigned initialized with any value it has to be done there X has to be the right hand side which gets ultimately converted to your ultimately converted converted to your solution. LDB is the same we saw and info is just a indication, just uh, just a variable to say uh, what's going on over here. Suppose if the info is zero or something, the result will be correct. If it's, uh, if it's less than one, it shows it shows that some problem could be there. And if it's like greater than one, it's it will show some other value indicate some other indi value say indi indicating that you know the solution did not come out properly or not something of that sort and uh, i'm using the print statement over here to get the values okay now how to compile th how to compile and build all this i just made a, sh a small shell script over here okay small shell script over here okay let me go to that i'm deleting all the object files executable files and mod files here and uh, this i think i don't need this file I think I don't need this file. I was just checking out something. Okay, first what you need is that you just have to compile this file lapak underscore ex2 dot f95. That's fine. Now if we compile this, we will get an object file, and this is this uh, you have to include this flag. Very important. Very very important. What what does this flag does is that it just tells to the compiler that okay there are some files in this folder. Link it. This my capital L flag is used for linking the files and okay and then once this is done okay you have to indicate that we'll be using lapac and blast for running all these functions so uh, you have to give additional these two flags in addition to the object files when you guys do this what you'll get is that you'll get a file called as a.out and if you want to rename that file what you do is that there's this the shell command called as mv use this mv and what you do is that when you try type this this uh, output this executable a dot out gets converted into a lapac underscore ex dot exe and then we run the exe over here i have tested this now this shell script is actually executable so what i do is that this file is ready this file is ready now let's check check it out you guys look at this solution this the solution for this simul equation set is 1 minus 2 minus 2 so we should get something we should get uh, x uh, as per this part, we should get x1 to be 1, x2 to be minus 2, and x3, x3, x3 to be minus 3, minus 2. Okay? Now, let's check this out. Now, building this in th from Genie. Okay. Uh, execute. Nice. Perfect. If you guys look at this, the solutions are exact. And, uh, you know, this way, you don't have to, you know, uh, write your own code. You can just... Uh, after a little search, you can just work your way out and uh, you know call the subroutines that are available in LAPAC and La LAPAC and BLAST for your op for your uh, operations. Like suppose if you, I mean this is very easy in the sense it they, they these are flexible these packages and subroutines are flexible enough to include a very large number of very large number of complications and all which might be you know which you might encounter in your future in encounter in your work. So this is wa really really worth the try. Okay now. Uh, this is just a sample tutorial. This is just a sample tutorial. I may not be, I mean, I may not be, you know, delving into LAPAC much, but it's definitely recommended for people. And if you, if, if, if you guys are, you know, seriously working with Fortran for your job, then LAPAC is, I rec LAPAC is highly recommended. For others who want to do, you know, uh, wanted to give a try, it's all, there's always worth a try. And you want to work with Fortran itself for your job, it's your call. Okay. That's all I have for you guys in this tutorial. Thank you guys for watching and uh, I'll see you guys next time. Bye.